for Vancouver Centre. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I just want to say at the offset that I will be sharing my time with the Honourable Member for Lac Saint Louis. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I am happy to speak to this particular bill because it is really bringing us into the 21st century. Uh, it is, as everyone has said, it is in 1991 that we actually amended the Broadcasting Act, and we've done nothing about it since. Uh, so I am happy to speak to this amendment to the Broadcasting Act. I think when 1991 was a pre-digital era, since 1991 until now, we have seen a change in how people access information, entertainment. It is through their own uh, streaming on their own devices, on iPad, on computers, whatever. They're not accessing it the usual way anymore. And so we need to get in tune with the times and we need to move this forward. At the same time, what has happened, I think, is we've heard since 1991 from Senate committees, House of Commons committees, panels that are independent panels, media and cultural sectors who have said to us that it is an important time for us to recognize that while we have certain rules for Canadian media and for Canadian entertainment, we do not have the same rules for these internet giants from the United States and internationally who actually enter our homes every day through these various devices and who are not regulated. They have shown that they do not wish to self-regulate. They've been asked to self-regulate. Well, now they haven't. They've shown that they can't do that, so it's time to regulate them because we regulate Canadian content. We regulate Canadian broadcasters. We regulate Canadian news. We regulate everything about Canadian media. And so Canadian media is at a total disadvantage when we look at the unregulated international media out there. And this is not something that we're doing just because we're Canadians and we want to be, uh, you know, parochial. It isn't. It is that the United uh, Europe the European Union is saying that they need to maintain European cultural content. Uh, Australia is saying that they need to look at Australian cultural content. I think also we find that everyone is concerned about the disinformation that is unregulated and spread by these international giants. Our own Canadian media have to be careful about how they pr process information, what they say, how they say it, because they are subject to CRTC ruling on this issue. So we're bringing everything down into what I call leveling the playing field. At the same time, Ms. M Madam Speaker, one of the important things about this is that it was only in 1997 was the last time when Sheila Copps decided to go to bat for Canadian content. When she looked at how magazines that were coming into Canada were giving us news from the United States, from everywhere else, but very little Canadian news. We are looking at how journalism is under, under stress right now because and we're not getting a lot of Canadian news from our own uh, Canadian journalists because they're being laid off rapidly. So we are getting the news from international news aggregators, such as Google and Facebook, who are taking everybody else's news from whatever source, not necessarily from a, a source that is uh, looking at being regulated for the veracity of its content. They're just taking it from anywhere. They're aggregate, aggregating it. People are reading it. They don't know what's true, what's misinformation, what's disinformation. We also see that by not regulating themselves, the these internet giants are also not following things like the content and hate, and, and they're not uh, looking at some of the content that is spread out there that is very dangerous and harmful. Yet our Canadian media have to follow all these rules. So we're bringing this up to scratch so that we are on a level playing field. But I think it's also important that when Sheila Cobbs in the 1990s talked about Canadian content, she also looked at how she could protect the music sector. Because as you well know, this uh, and she got on a lot of flat for it, but it worked out to be exactly what we needed. People were buying blank tapes and downloading everybody's music and playing it without having to pay a charge. So she added a surtax on buying of, of, of uh, blank tapes so that that money went into a pot so that we can create what later on turned out to be a, a, a great time for Canadian music. It began to be spread around the world. We saw the divas were mostly Canadian. We saw all of this happening. It is time we stood up, not only for Canadian 
content for Canadian cultural sovereignty. We also want to reflect Canadian culture is a culture that's a very diverse culture. It's culture made up of, of uh, official bilingualism, of French within Quebec and French outside of Quebec. Uh, the government said clearly in the throne speech, it's going to protect that. We look at all of our indigenous culture, which is so rich. Uh, we look at all of our ethnic cultures and our racialized cultures, LGBTQ voices. And, and of course, we know that geographically, what the Atlantic province's cultural content is very different from BC and the Maritimes. We need to get to know each other as Canadians. We need to get to understand each other's stories, hear them and tell them. And we also know that, and I've heard this from creators always, that they are, Canadian creators are actually out there writing stories, etc. It's being pilloried by other people. They're not getting any kind of reimbursement for their intellectual property. So let's talk about how we reimburse Canadian intellectual property. Let's talk about how we're leveling the playing field. And I think that that is what this bill is doing. It's not a nefarious bill. Nobody's saying people are not going to be able to have the opportunity to, to stream what they want. All we're saying is that the CRTC has required that Canadian media, Canadian entertainment must actually do up to 45% of its production that is Canadian content, and that they must put money into creating that. But we have not said this of all of the other content that we get from media giants who are making a lot of money from Canadian content uh, and not reimbursing that to Canadians and not reflecting the diversity of Canadian life and Canadian regionality. So we want to bring this down. We do not want in a global world, and, and Javier Perez de Acuera said this back in the late 1990s from UNESCO when he said that globalization has one flaw to it, that what we're seeing is that the world is now hearing some kind of amorphous culture and we are losing a sense of our own sovereignty, our own cultural identities. Europe has taken a step now to make sure that that isn't going to happen. It is doing something similar to what we're doing. Australia is also taking steps to ensure that we're doing what we're doing. We do not want Canadian media to be under certain restrictions and regulations and then have international media and international media giants spreading uh, and, and spreading information, disinformation, hate, all kinds of inappropriate things on the internet um, and that we cannot regulate them. So I think this is a good time. I think the idea that we could get money and that they are required, like Canadian media, to put in money into creating Canadian content is something that our creators need, our music industry needs, our all of that intellectual, wonderful intellectual property. I mean, we know, nobody has to tell us as Canadians how great stories tellers we are, what great writers we have, what fabulous producers, what content. You just have to look at Schitt's Creek and see that that has become a major um, a piece of Canadian storytelling and Canadian comedic acting and all of that. We need to protect that, but we need more than anything else to level the playing field. This is not asking the CRTC to do something nefarious. It's just saying, here you are, CRTC. You will make the same requirements and regulations that will level the playing field for Canadian media uh, as we do for the international giants who don't have to follow any of these rules. That's the first thing. Secondly, they're going to be required to contribute to Canadian content in the same way that Canadian media must do. Uh, we are also saying that you need to know that we have to reflect the diversity of Canadian culture, which is very different from other cultures internationally. So this is not something that is strange or big brother or anything. We're just trying to level the playing field. We're we're trying to give our our Canadian content a break, and we're trying to make sure that we tell and hear our own stories. I think this is important. The regulation of information is really important. Uh, when you look at news, you know, when you look at all of the panels and the Senate committees and the House of Commons committees, the last one being the committee I chaired that gave its report in 2017 that pointed out that we are not seeing ourselves in our own news and in our own media and in our own entertainment. We're not seeing indigenous voices. We're not hearing regional voices. We're not seeing the racialized and the LGBTQ and the ethnic um, uh, 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 groups within our country telling their stories. We are unique as a nation. We're very different. 
And we need to reflect that difference. And who knows, maybe other people streaming Canadian content out there in, uh, in France or in the United States or in some other thing might learn a little bit about who we are as Canadians, might actually be inspired. This is a 